Hello, my name is Anja Shevanko and I come from the University of Novi Sad in Serbia. I spent one year as an exchange student in Finland at the Laperanta University of Technology thanks to the Sigma Agile project. My research was about the economic prospects of cryptocurrencies and blockchain and it was done under the mentorship of Professor Andrzej Kraslavski. I'm here today to share the results with you. The most impactful cryptocurrency, the Bitcoin, is often described as the first automobile. There are still many flaws and obstacles to be overcome for it to compete with the traditional fiat currency system, but today we will focus on the strengths and opportunities that the Bitcoin and its core underlying technology, the blockchain, are already offering. So what is Bitcoin? The Bitcoin, with a capital B, refers to a payment network. A network of anonymously linked computers, which together are forging a decentralized system of trust. The Bitcoin, with a small letter B, refers to a digital currency, a store of value for which this network was built in the first place and maintained so far. While the traditional currency system involves a trust into a third party like banks, Bitcoin relies on cryptographic proofs for every transaction that is made. Every valid transaction is seen by every user of the network on the public ledger, which is called the blockchain. The Bitcoin emerged at the height of economic recession in 2008, when the traditional currency system was facing crisis. An unknown author or a group of authors released a paper entitled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Uh, well, uh, under an alias Satoshi Nakamoto. Well, uh, it's, it hasn't been uh, determined is Satoshi one person or a group of people, and he has never been seen, but he was communicating uh, to the group of selected programmers to realize his idea. And while the official Bitcoin network has been released, uh, initially begun working in 2009, uh, Satoshi disappeared from the scene in April 2011, never to be seen again. While we may never find out who Satoshi is, from a marketing point of view, this mysterious creator and his righteous vision for a currency transformation certainly make a great brand story. It inspired many followers to dedicate their lives to building this system, and the Bitcoin community is often compared to a religious cult based on the user's loyalty. So the main uh, difference and an advantage of the Bitcoin as the currency system is that it doesn't include a middleman. This means cheaper and faster transactions for the two parties and an increased privacy for both of them. Without banks, the transaction cost would be significantly lower and there wouldn't be mandatory information giving to which requirement the third party would only slow down the transaction process. And the Bitcoin is decentralized also in a way that it doesn't belong to any specific country. So no government can control Bitcoin directly, but governments can influence its performance through taxation and regulations. Decentralization is good for another reason. There are over 50 countries in the world excluded from the traditional systems payment processors such as PayPal. So Bitcoin can serve as an uh, enabler of internalization uh, and a new market opener. For example, shipping electronic equipment to countries such as Moldova and Pakistan was hardly ever possible for American merchants before the secure Bitcoin payments existed as a channel. For better or worse, the value of Bitcoin is mainly determined by its supply and demand. So it doesn't fit into the classical definition of currency, and in some states it's even proclaimed a volatile commodity. However, it would be more appropriate to observe Bitcoin as a stock which can occasionally serve as a currency in some places. It turns out that the value of the Bitcoin is highly independent of values of other assets such as S&P 500 stocks and commodities such as oil and gold. So if contained within an investment portfolio, Bitcoin can serve as a great tool for decreasing its volatility. It creates diversification, it brings balance like no other asset. And that's another function specific for Bitcoin. 
So where does Bitcoin stand today? As a currency, its value had a rather turbulent journey, but recently it seems to be in a bullish trend. Since China forbid, forbid the exchange of yen to dollars, whoever wanted to take their money out of the country was firstly converting it to Bitcoins. And this large increase in demand made Bitcoin's value reach its all-time high value of $1,290 in March 3, 2017. This value also jumped over the value of a golden bar. However, as a currency system, Bitcoin is still far from being preferred unit of account. People are still measuring value for most according to the traditional currency system, which in fact is more stable. But as a medium of exchange and a disruptive force to the old system, Bitcoin is becoming more and more significant. Recently, Russia is allowing the use of Bitcoins, but still forbids the mining process and its creation within the country borders. President Trump administration is looking forward to implement the blockchain for a wide array of purposes, but uh, taxes Bitcoin as a commodity. In China, private parties are allowed to hold and trade Bitcoins, and China currently holds the majority of Bitcoin supply. The, the power centers in Europe doesn't seem to have any restriction or taxation regarding Bitcoins. And finally, Poland is among countries whose regulators are searching for ways to help the adoption of cryptocurrencies. Now, there are many other cryptocurrencies besides Bitcoin, and maybe some other will be the prevailing one, because a new name can also mean rebranding and a detachment from all the negative stuff that the name Bitcoin carries around, such as being labeled as the currency for criminals. Uh, but, in general, it wouldn't be wrong to expect that cryptocurrencies will coexist with the traditional currency system as equal in the future, if not start replacing it at some point. Now let's focus on the blockchain, the revolutionary technology that emerged along with the cryptocurrencies. The invention of the blockchain brought a solution to the Byzantine general's problem, a long-standing issue in distributed computing. Powered by the peer-to-peer -peer file and sharing system and a public key cryptography, the blockchain allows us to have a decentralized system of trust which can work without a third party. So the blockchain basically is like a public list of information, a ledger, which every user of the system's network can see, and once an information has entered into that ledger, it automatically gets a timestamp, and the ledger itself is a proof that this information exists from that moment of time. No user can change or delete an information after its entry, neither he can alter the past in order to input false information. And this is possible because a single computer can outperform the rest of the network. Uh, now, this transparency created by the blockchain leads to safety. And based on this, blockchain is already enabling new types of business models. There are warriors, startups, and companies that aim to provide proof of ownership to artists, patent, and license holders. Certain governments are trying to implement blockchain to secure public records such as land and property titles, birth and death certificates, etc. And finally, this technology also seems promising to resolve the issue of uncertainty that exists in the sharing economy, such as risk of dealing with strangers when going through Uber or Airbnb. So the bottom line is the flexibility of cryptocurrencies and blockchain alone uh, gives them a great potential to become something much bigger in the future. Now we got to the main parts of my research, my own ideas for how the cryptocurrencies and blockchain would be used to improve the world. Number one is resolving the issue of grey market activities. The grey market activities refer to the exchange of goods or services which are legal, but the process itself is unregulated by the state or illegal. Typical examples are selling the knockoff merchandise on the streets and hiring un undocumented workers. But in developing countries, the grey market activities can often be an only option for survival to the poorest classes. Now, I found about 20 countries in the world where the amount of grey market activities is significant in a way that it represents, uh, it represents a, a bigger uh, percentage of the total GDP and the use of bitcoins is not restricted or used uh, or uh, taxed in these countries. So what these uh, businesses, unregistered businesses in these countries could do is technically start charging their services 
for goods in bitcoins exclusively, and in that way uh, they wouldn't uh, be breaking the law or, or risking penalties, because bitcoin is not seen as a currency in these states. So uh, they wouldn't be performing business operations, but rather bartering operations, and these bartering operations would allow them to promote and grow their distribution. If governments could recognize this potential, they could transform the grey market activities into something good that helps their economies. And at this uh, year yearly value of uh, grey market goods and services could account as a new layer of GDP. And to, to create this layer, the creation of this layer uh, wouldn't mean increasing national debt, because Bitcoin doesn't belong to any specific country. Uh, military assets with greater computing power would be put to mining crypto coins, and in this way, countries could finance their own economic improvements. Of course, obvious obstacles uh, is that in corrupt governments, uh, the governments wouldn't even intend to change the situation and would rather start taxing bitcoins, and that the people in these countries are not used to trade in bitcoins. So, a strong governmental initiative would be crucial for this idea to work. We all heard about the industrial Internet of Things, right? The highly anticipated second round of Internet revolution and a grand vision to merge the physical and the digital world by connecting machines. Imagine that you can sit in your house and your house can scan your needs and mood in order to determine what would be the optimal food that would please you in the moment. Your house then communicates with your refrigerator to check are all the ingredients available. If something is missing, your refrigerator could order it on its own. And while your optimal groceries are arriving by a driverless car, you can focus working on more important matters. Well, the, the blockchain could reportedly figure as a key enabler for this vision because it could provide uh, a, a secure data history for a trustless messaging system between the devices. And cryptocurrencies are seen as the payment system which would fit the transaction between the devices the best, because without banks, the without the middleman included, uh, the transaction cost would be faster and there wouldn't be a need for human intervention. Only then the full automatization would be possible. Now, warriors' devices with computing power could be put to mining cryptocurrencies. Uh, so just imagine that your devices could earn you money by time. There is also a big data market, and selling data is another opportunity promised by the IoT. So, imagine that every tech purchase could mean an investment. You go on a long vacation, and when you come back, you return to see uh, you, you, all of your devices are upgraded for the money, by the money they earned for themselves by mining. Well, predictions about the tech future does make this idea seem reasonable. And finally, I figured that the Bitcoin could be used to create an innovative marketing strategy for selling rare, collectible, and high-end luxury commodities. This principle of scarcity teaches that the goods which are rare or hard to, or, or hard to get have an increased value. For example, the watch brand Patek Philippe have made only six copies of their model Grandmaster Chime. In order to get this watch, a potential buyer must also pass the interview with the chairman of the brand in order to earn the privilege to make the purchase. And based on these uh, scarcity approaches, uh, combined, people are willing to pay $2.5 million for this item. Now, the thing about the Bitcoin is that it has a limited supply. Uh, the amount of Bitcoins is, gro is steadily growing by the years, however, there, were, there will